Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, today we are going to be working on um, leveraging um, formative assessments. So I'm glad that you could be here. Let's review our professional development norms, be committed, be responsible, be respectful, and be safe. Um, you also need to, if you're on today, to mute your microphone. If you have a question or comment, you can tap, type it in the chat. You can up everything that we do here in Canyons District is uh, about our MTSS framework. Um, this right now we are going to be working on data decision making. So we're working in this red zone on the MTSS framework. So our learning intention success criteria today are, I'm learning about the opportunities for ELA for formative assessment so that I can make learning visible. I'll know I've learned it when I can name one formative assessment that I'd like to try with my students. So again, our content tonight is using and leveraging formative assessments with the ELA curriculum. Let's look first at the day five of the 95% phonics core program. Um, one of the suggestions that we've made to schools is that you assess along the way. Your first formative assessment is that while you are working with students, that you are actually using your um, little track, your little um, uh, clicker. We've suggested that you use a clicker. So if you have a clicker, something like this, that you would actually use that and that you're walking around and looking at student work. That's your first formative assessment. You would note to see if there were two or three students that didn't know it, you move on. If there are more than that, you consider retracing your steps or being more explicit in your instruction. Then uh, you have a formative assessment in day five. That formative assessment, there is a small assessment of what you have done with the skill for the week. And then you also have a summative assessment with the unit tests. So let's take a look at some of that. Here we have our five-day application. You can see on the screen, they, there, here they have those fluency words. You can chant those, echo read them. You could have kids partner reading or dyad reading. You have fluency phrases and sentence dictation. Um, here is another example of a second grade day five, some of those same items, and also a third grade day five about the morphology. These are the places that um, in the classroom, you might consider taking your grades or uh, foundations work. You also might consider using a checklist or some sort of spreadsheet that you put onto, say, if you have a mobile iPad, that you could be pulling up a student's name and putting a check mark in if they got the skill that you were working on. So if you were working on the morphology, say, in third grade, uh, vis, V-I-S, or vis, V-I-S-E, or like vision, meaning to see, you might be looking at that morphology piece of how they utilize that that morphine. You also might work, do something on, say, phoneme deletion if you've been working on that, watching how they respond. Another place would might be in the day five, looking at the fluency of how they read the word chunks based on the pattern, whether they were doing like the vowel silent E pattern, or if they were um, doing a vowel team pattern and um, marking those, showing their um, syllable type with their fingers and being able to model that. Well, in case you haven't noticed yet, and it's okay because we are working on a new curriculum, we have unit assessments in the 95 phonics core program. Here we have an example, whoops, um, here, here we have an example of where it is in your um, curriculum uh, guide, and it will be denoted by a row that's kind of grayed out and where it comes in the scope and sequence. 
So here's an example of that. This is a grade one example. So here we have the assessments for the year overview and where they would come. This is out of the 95% group portal. And then we have here what the teacher TAM directions are. And then here is the page that the students would get. So this really could be done in one day or one session and you can use some of your flexible time to be able to give this assessment. This assessment might help you to group students for what they know and what they don't know. So maybe back on this um, other screen, let's see, I need to go back here. Back on this screen, you saw some work that you needed to do when you were doing day five or even when you were walking around. But then when you went to the unit assessment, the students still didn't have it, even though you were working with them. You might work with your team and sort your students by who has which skills and why, and even use your foundation's time during your week six, if you had extra time there to be able to group students and reteach some of those concepts. It's okay to pause, have a reteaching week, and be able to use that sixth week that's built into your uh, foundations block where it's been mapped, like it is here. There is no six week present, so one, two, three, four, five. And if you look at that um, six week, I don't know why this keeps going backwards. <laughs> if you look at the, if you look at this six week map you will see that there are six weeks, but there is uh, the time frame that is there is six weeks of teaching days or 30 days, but only 25 days of lessons. So you'd have that five days to be able to utilize that foundation's time for possibly another time of skill grouping around these components. Sorry about the back and forth on the slides for those who are watching. If you're doing wonders, one of our goals this year is to really look at the four text sets. So when you're doing those four text sets, you're introducing your concept with the interactive read aloud. There is not a lot of items to grade because you're building background knowledge and those kinds of things in that text set. You are then also doing the respond to reading with the shared read. You're doing a respond to reading with the anchor text, and you're doing an integration of knowledge and ideas with the uh, paired read. Those are the four places or the three places that you could use the analytical rubric. This was sent out and is also linked in this um, slide deck below of what you can look for in these analytical rubrics. The way these were designed is that here are the standard groupings. We have reading, we have language, and we have writing. That's what these dark lines denote. Here we have the reporting standards as they are on the report card. This is an example from a third grade. And then we have that you could be looking here, was the, did the student give evidence? Is it present partially or none? And so here, if it's present, you might color that in or put an X on it, however you want to do that. And then is the question answered or partially answered or not answered? And then this would go on the report card for asks and answers questions. If you feel like your kids are doing this orally but are, are not doing it in a written form, you could do this with the speaking and be sure that you move eventually to writing because that's where you want kids to be able to do that. Um, language and grammar, it's here uh, could also be marked about sentences, about the conventions, about how they use phrases from the text. Notice this grayed out place for writing. The question and prompt is answered. We have reasons, supporting details, et cetera. If you look back up here, this is where you'll be getting that, and that's why that has that little star there. These two items for this star right here correlate with this. So whatever the student got here, they should also be getting here. So you don't have to mark it twice. Now, the first step to an analytical writing is that students themselves check their own work or with their peers. Here, we've provided the 
student checklist. So here, these items, instead of giving the partial, because it, that would be hard for students to um, look at or see, instead of giving a partial and evaluating whether or not it's partially done, it's basically is evident or I didn't do it. So here, the question is answered yes. If it's blank, then it's a no. Uh, my response has evidence, yes or no. So kids here are self-evaluating, or you could also have them work with partners to evaluate each other and double check their items. One of the things that we have also given that you could use is how do I evaluate a student's fluency? A lot of you are giving um, assessments of particularly the progress monitoring assessments, but rate is not the only way to um, explain fluency. So another way in ELA to have um, a score and understand whether or not kids are good at reading is right here. This is the fluency expression rubric. This has linked, you can see the little finger that comes up here. So you can click on this so that you have your own copy. This is uh, done by the work of Tim Rosinski. Here you're rating their expression and volume, their phrasing, smoothness, and their pace, which would be their rate. One of the reasons we use rate to evaluate a student's fluency is because it has a 0.91 correlation to comprehension. What that means is if I am fluent at a specific rate, I most likely, nine times out of 10, will be able to comprehend that piece of text. But of course, as I said before, there is more to fluency than rate. So one of the things that you, uh, students should be able to do with fluency is have expression and volume because emphasizing certain words, knowing when to pause helps me to understand a piece of text. Phrasing meaning that I'm not reading word by word, but I have those phrases. And she went outside over there on the road. Those kinds of phrases are fluent and roll off the tongue. And then it's smooth also that punctuation is being attended to and that um, there are not a lot of hesitations, that the smoothness is something that can be heard. It's easy to listen to and to hear. If you also wanted to give assessments around how your student uh, listens, you could attend to the speaking and listening rubric. It's part of um, the items that are um, linked in your instructional guide, but I've also linked it here in this um, slide deck. So you hear on the left, you see the standards, and then if the student is acquiring, building automaticity or is able to apply it and the standard is met. This speaking and listening rubric can help you with four speaking and listening standards and can help you to be able to decide what kinds of scores or other things that you can um, give a student in speaking and listening. Why is speaking and listening so important? It's because you will be able to see whether or not a student is developing their own oral language that they're using those academic components and academic words that you want them to be able to do so that they can critically think, they can use analysis and summarizing and be able to synthesize ideas between, around, and using their background knowledge with text, and that it's a bridge to writing. If I can speak it and I can talk about it to someone, I most likely can write it as well. Let's also talk about that there are other progress monitoring assessments that come with wonders. You may or may not have toyed with these ideas about wonders. And I want to remind you that doing the wonders assessments is not something that we, um, we vowed to take it off your plate this year. And we also realized that many of you want it. And so you can use it, you can utilize it, and if you are wanting to understand that, I would ask that you invite either myself or Leanne Fisher to come out and support you with that um, because we have some of the answers 
um, to how to use assessments and wonders. One of the things that we want you to know is that we have found the item analysis in wonders. And so there is one that is similar to that of what you were used to with Reading Street. However, not exactly. Um, the first thing that you do is you go into the My Assessments. You're able to see customized assessments. You can also share between each other. And that these are all fol folders that open up into all of these assessments. There is something called the Progress Monitoring Assessment. And I've seen some teachers that have used some the unit assessment. That's what you're used to from um, Reading Street. But what Wonders wants you to do is use the Progress Monitoring Assessment. Their Progress Monitoring Assessment is not the same as what you are experiencing with Acadians. It actually goes back to what you're teaching, that skill that you're teaching in your week. So if you are grades um, two through five, Here's an example, here's unit two, week three and four, because that's the 10 day cycle, progress monitoring, and some of the skills, it will show you what that has in the skills, what kind of um, testing item it is. You can customize it if you don't didn't teach something, you don't want it there, you can delete that and you can also share that out with your um, teams. Um, I'm not going to go through all of that today, um, if anyone is online or would like to have customized help, I feel like the help needs to be customized uh, based on what you want and where your students are. And with that, um, I can help and support you if you invite me out. When you share assessments, you customize assessments, go into the My Assessments, and your copies received go in here. Once you've received a copy from a teammate, you're able to use that and assign it to your own students. If you're wanting to monitor your own data, there's a whole preview on assessment that is linked here in this slide. I would start at minute 55, and it goes to a little bit, oh, it's about, 15 minutes of that presentation. I've also made a screencast of how to look at the item analysis that you can link right here. So let's review. I'm learning about opportunities in ELA for formative assessment so you can make learning visible. Think to yourself, is there one thing that was talked about in this professional learning that you would like to try with your students. Jot that down on a sticky note or somewhere. See what you want to contact myself or Leanne for. We're happy to come out and it is great to chat with you. Thank you for attending and listening to this um, Bite Size PD. Um, hope we hear from some of you so that um, uh, we can help you with all the things that you need with the implementation of the new ELA curriculum.